How's it going, guys? Um, like Coach said, I'm Will Lawhorn. I'm the run game coordinator, offensive line coach at Rockford University in Rockford, Illinois. Um, I'm going to talk some, today about some of our zone techniques, um, how we teach off of it so we can teach each technique um, and go from there. So a little bit about us. Um, you know, our offense, we're pre-snap RPO offense. If you allow us to play on the perimeter, we're going to. The minute you start giving us even numbers, you start capping receivers, things like that, we'll run the ball. The minute you walk safeties down, start going one high cover zero, that's when we'll take our play action shot, shots. Now everything for us has answers built in. So if we're gonna take a shot, we'll have a shark route, a swing, some sort of flat to make sure we're getting the ball to the, quarters, the quarterback's hands. Um, because most times when you're walking those guys down, going cover one, cover zero, cover three, things like that, you bring a lot more guys than we can block. Okay, um, like I said, zone run scheme, progression pass game. Um, you know, we do what our kids can do. We're a zone run scheme because we do what our kids are comfortable with doing um, and going from there. Um, you know, that's our offensive system. You know, we're firm believers we're going to get the ball in our best players' hands. You know, we had a receiver um, who, through the regular season, led the nation in every single um, statistic that a receiver could lead the nation in. Um, you know, so we're going to get the ball in his hands. He's special. That's where he's going to be. He's going to be in every single one of our progressions. We graduated a running back who was a really good receiving running back, really good, really good. Uh, he had a really good vision. He was a one cut, one cut uh, kind of guy. Um, so we're going to get him in every progression. So that's what that is. Um, you know, our philosophy and mission statement, you know, plain and simple, we want to be the most physical and toughest unit in the NAC. We're firm believers. Um, you know, our, the success of the whole unit relies on us. If we can't protect the quarterback, we're not getting the pass off, plain and simple. If we can't create running lanes for the running back, we're going to have a very long day. You know, we want to set, use the run to set up the pass, and that, put, that weighs on our shoulders. So everything starts up with us. You know, physicality and toughness, I'm a firm believer, those are kind of general ther terms that kind of just get thrown around. So we define them. You know, physicality equals force. Force equals mass times acceleration. The faster you play, the more physical you're going to be, okay? When we talk about toughness, you know, we talk about being able to get the job done no matter what the circumstances are. It doesn't matter what the guy across from me does, I have a job that I have to do, plain and simple. You know, one thing we talked about this fall, there shouldn't be excuses anymore. The only thing we care about is results. So the fundamentals of offensive line play for us, you know, I think I'd be doing you guys a disservice if we didn't talk about that. You know, we've got four SSPS, Okay, the guys are working on coming up with an acronym for, acronym for that. It's what they want to do. Stance, steps, posture, and strike. Everything we do is going to revolve around those four fundamentals. Stance, steps, posture, and strike. If something goes wrong in a play, if something goes wrong in a play, we're going to be able to re relate it back to one of those four things. So stance, you know, stance, I'm a firm believer that's something you have to work almost every single day, especially in the off season. You know, it literally says in the Bible, don't build on sand or your house will wash away, okay? Your, your, your stance is your foundation. If you're building on stand, sand with a bad stance, you're in trouble, okay? So we talk about with stance, you know, we generally let the guys pick. If you want to go into two-point or a three-point, because it's their technique, they have to own it. Now, we talk about comfort. Comfort is king, but I have to be functional. So if you want to go into two-point, that's fine. I'm a three-point stance guy just because I'm a firm believer in pad level, getting my chin below the guy below the guy I'm supposed to block chin. But a lot of our kids have played football. 99% of our kids have played football before they come to us. So we're going to let them do what they're comfortable with. You know, the four things we're looking for, I got to create a triangle with my lower body. My toes got to be at 11 and 1. Okay, so I'm opening up the hinge joint and forcing myself to play on my insteps. We always teach a toe to heel stagger for everyone except centers. The reason we do that is so now we can mix and match guys if we need to. You know, we only, we've only got, right now we've got eight offensive linemen in the program, so a lot of guys play a lot of different positions for us, okay? And then we always talk about a forward chest, not a down chest. So I want my head above my bust, but I want my chest forward, not backwards. I wanna tuck my lats into the back pocket and make my chest as big as possible. Okay, like I said, with a two point or a three point, we let them pick. Biggest thing, eyes have to be up and our knees, nose, and toes have to be in a straight line. Steps, biggest thing with steps is force through the ground. Okay, we have to drive out of our backside hip and backside knee. One thing we talk a lot about the guys with is mental weight. All right, so if you're dry blocking a three technique and you're a right guard on inside, going, inside zone going to the right, you got to dry block him, drive out of that, put my mental weight on my inside leg or backside leg. 
okay? Advance your stance through three steps. So your pad level should not change through your three steps, okay? Step on the toes. You know, I'm a big believer in just giving the, giving the guys visual cues instead of, you know, take a six inch step here, things like that, because there's not a ruler out there on the football field. So when I'm stepping, I should be trying to step on my toes, replace my heel with my toes. And one thing I skipped over is just own your angle of departure. You know, one thing with steps, we can't we can dictate how the guys line, how the defense lines up with you know our splits, motions, things like that. But you've always got to own your angle. Take the best angle that's going to get you to where you need to be to your aiming points on each block. Posture, okay. When we talk posture, it's the position of our body or the arrangement of our limbs, head, arms, legs, everything. Very very general, okay. Biggest things that these nose and toes need to be in a straight line. We always talk about a 345s. It starts in our stance. We should create 345 degree angles with our ankles, knees, and hips. Okay? From there, we talk about pad level when we talk about posture. When we talk about pad level, I want my eyes on his nose. My eyes on his nose. Okay? Now, if I have a 6-6 tackle, which I don't have any of those right now, but if you have a 6-6 tackle, okay, it's gonna be really hard for him to get below a 5-8, 5-9, 5, 5, 5 10 defensive end. Okay, because that guy's playing with the same posture that you're going to play with. All right, so we talk about keeping those 345s through the rep. All right, through the rep. So this is how we drill posture. The first thing we're going to do is strain drill. So what we're going to have, we're going to have two guys with that, um, agility bags. They're going to be shoulder to shoulder, and then I'll have the guys just get fitted up. From there, first whistle, they should be chopping their feet and trying to drive. That's one thing our guys got to get a lot better at. The defensive guys you'll see in this film kind of just stand there and watch. It's one thing we got to get a little better at. You're going to try to drive them. It's two guys versus one. You shouldn't be able to move him. Okay? Second whistle, we should accelerate our feet and work through. You can see 72 does a pretty good job here. He loses his base a little bit, and then we, can, we finish on the rep. Now we'll go to the next rep, 76 right here. I already don't like it. My eyes are down. My head, is, my head is in the block. Now he peeks it out. He peeks it out. He's not doing a great job of stepping on his toes. And then we go from there. Now there is a such thing as being a little too wide. Towards the end of the rep, you watch number 52, he probably gets a little too wide with his base. He starts narrow. He winds back out. He gets a little too wide. Then we'll progress it to fit and finish drill. So what fit, fit and finish drill, now it's one versus one. Now D linemen, as much as I would like them to, not gonna just stand right in front of you and let them block you. They're going to try to escape. So now we'll have that, have that defender holding the bag. He's gonna work side to side like a D lineman trying to escape. So we should see you high hip in, keep my elbows tight, which we'll talk about in a minute. And we're from there. Here's our guys doing it. If I watch 68 right here, his base gets way too narrow. He's playing on his tiptoes, not his insteps. 56 does a little bit better job here. So strike and hand placement. One thing we always talk about is our elbows are always clogged, all right? When we say clogged, I want to pretend like a rope is tied around my upper body and my arms are in it. So my elbows are as tight as possible with my big chest. This is going to force as I strike to have inside hands, okay? So this is going to force to have inside hands. Okay, the next thing we'll talk about is hands are always low and in front. All right, so they're low and in front arm blasters. I used to be a big strength and conditioning guy. Then I got married and uh, discovered beer in Little Caesars Pizza in Jacksonville, Illinois. So I, so I got a little out of shape. Um, but an arm blaster, um, when you're doing bicep curls, you put your arms in, they force you to tuck your arms. It's the same thing. So as I come out of my stance, my arms are low and in front. I've got my arm blaster on that's forcing my elbows in front as I clog them. Okay, we always talk about striking on the rise. Bob Wiley used to always say um, pad level and demeanor is about separating the upper body from the lower body. And that's what we're trying to do on the D lineman. We're trying to take his upper body and pry it up on our punch. Okay, and then we always talk about backside hand, no matter what the block is run game wise, your backside hand is going to steer the ship. Okay, so if I'm if I have to scoop off a two eye on the backside of inside zone, my backside hand, if I make contact with that first, is going to steer the ship. So here's how we drill hand placement. The first thing is strike on the rise. So we'll just do simple uh, six point explosion drill. I should see you bring your hips forward on your punch. You should shock this guy and then you should land on your stomach. Here we go. 
His 55 does a little bit, a pretty good job here. I'd like to see him keep his elbows tucked as he explodes up. My hips should be the first thing that moves as I go through. Then we'll progress and we'll go four point. Now, if I look at 76 here, this is not a good rep. My hips aren't pushing through. I'm just placing my hands on somebody. My hips aren't going through. So I have no power behind my punch. If I watch 63, he's a freshman right now. He's gonna be pretty good. This is a much better rep. From there, we'll get on a lev sled. So now, once again, we let our guys pick between a, between a three point and a two point. So now, their hands in the dirt, they're stepping to a lev sled, and I'm just watching their hips come through on their punch, and I'm just working on right and punching on the rise. So pre-snap front identification, and this stuff bases everything for us, whether it's our protection, um, in our, any of our run game, pre -snap, our pre-snap front identification is huge with us. You know, Bob Wiley said communication is 80% of the game. All right, one thing you probably, if you asked any of the offensive linemen, running backs, tight ends, anything, if we all tell the same lie, we can't be wrong. If we all tell the same lie, we can't be wrong. So we, we identify it as three fronts, okay? No matter what the defense does, there's gonna be a base three fronts that they're gonna line up in. An odd, which is three down, an even, which is four down, and then a bear, which is everyone on the offensive line is covered. Um, from there, you know, you can get into it, obviously an over front or an under front. You can get into an oaky or a tight, things like that but it's still an odd, even, or bare. Okay, so how we, how we communicate that, our center is gonna read the gu from guard to guard. The guards will come up, they will give the center the technique. So if I'm a right guard and someone's playing over my outside shoulder, he's gonna say, hey, three, three, three. The backside guard will say, hey, two eye, two eye, two eye. From there, the center looks, no one's over him. Now we can make our front call. So here we've got a picture of it. This right here is an even front. We've got two guys inside on the guards. We've got a three and a two eye. The center will walk up. Hey, even, even, even. Then we can get set, get our signal, go from there. Right here, we've got an odd front. We've got one guy from the guard, from guard to guard, one man on the center. So now we've got an odd. Now we've got a bear, three or more. So a bear is three, we consider a bear three or more. So everybody's covered now. You're probably gonna play with two DNs. Someone, if there's no one on the line that's a DN, he's probably gonna step up and run support post snap and become a DN. So, and then from there, it's just asking myself questions. You know, one thing, um, the Cool Clinic last year, Bob Wiley talked about organizing guys' thoughts pre-snap, okay? And I, that, that helped me out a ton as a player. I know, and it helps our guys out a ton too. So we break it down into three questions. We know the play, what's our rules? Is there a tag? How does that tag affect me? Okay, the next is how am I gonna get the job done? My technique, okay? And then how, what can the defense do versus how they're lined up? All right, based on how a defense is lined up, they're only gonna do a few things. You know, They're probably not gonna gap exchange a linebacker playing a 10 on a guard and a loose five end. We know that when we come up. So now into zone scheme. So why zone scheme? I'm a firm believer it's just simple. It allows the guys to play fast. It's very, very simple. All it comes down to is what's my gap? Am I covered or am I uncovered? Is there someone in the gap that I'm supposed to block? If not, all right, what am I doing from there? Okay, Coach Leto talked about double teams. All right, it's able, it, uh, it gives us the ability to get two guys on one on multiple spots down the line and sets clear tracks up to linebackers. For us, it's a personnel fitter. We don't have road graders right now, at least, um, but it's, you know, it's a personnel fitter, like I said, and then it allows us to have one play many ways. You know, we've got, you know, we ran two plays this year primarily, inside zone and outside zone. I think when we looked at the official, we looked at our breakdowns, we run, ran counter four times. We ran pin and pull once. It was atrocious, it made me want to throw up. Um, so it's just one play many ways. We can add so many different tags, which you guys will see as we show film. You know, we can bring a tight end, have him what we call otter motion back into the box, and then slice. He can lead up, so now we're running zone ISO. He can bluff and run zone lead. So there's a ton of different stuff we can do with that. So our rules and objectives. You know, our, our objectives, um, you know, inside zone's an A-gap to A-gap run play for us. Now, we do give the running back full fledge if he sees a hole to hit it, but he's always going to start his aiming point is down the hash, and he's going to read the center's combo. So if we're in a hash, he knows I got to set my belt buckle up down that hash, and I'm just going to read the butt of the center. Our goal is we wanted to displace the D-line vertically and then laterally. Lateral displacement is just as good as, horizontal, as vertical. I'm sorry. 
displacement. So we're trying to displace them vertically and then laterally. All right, our hips stay square until they can. And that's one thing our all line struggled with this spring. They stay square until they can't. Okay, so I'm trying to keep my hips facing the end zone. All right, so we can pick up movement games. We can define rush lanes for the running back, give him two way goes on everything. All right, and then doubles are 2v2, and communication is key. You have to know when you have help. If I have a combo inside of me, chances are if I'm a play side tackle, it's an even front. I know the play side guard and the center are going to double team together. I don't have much help. So if there's one thing I can't do, don't let that guy beat him inside of you. Go ahead, coach. So when we talk, and that's when we talk about steps, the wider that guy is, if I'm covered, if I stay square, the harder it's going to be to get to my aiming point. So say I'm a guard, our base splits are three feet. Okay, so if I'm a guard and I have a four eye, well, I'm covered. There's someone in my gap. If I stay square on that, it's going to be a lot harder for me to get to my aiming point. So now I can open up my hips a little bit. Plus a four eye, it's going to be a lot harder for him to travel and long stick to that A gap. Does that kind of make sense? Mm -hmm. So our doubles, like I said, are 2v2, so we don't know which guy's coming off pre-snap. That linebacker is always going to flow to where the running back is. He's going to get his initial read, and then he's flowing to where the running back's going to be. So it might be the postman, which we'll talk about in a minute. It might be the drive man. It's, two, it's four eyes, two hands. Four eyes on the down line, the, the linebacker, two hands on the down lineman. We can't, t we can't tell where that linebacker is going to go post-snap. So we'll, from there, you know, it just kind of depends on how we come off on that. Okay, now our rules, okay, uncovered doubles with play side covered up to the first linebacker on or play side of me. So if I'm uncovered, all right, I'm just gonna look, say I'm a center, I'm uncovered. Oh, hey, I'm gonna double with my right guard if it's inside zone, if it's inside zone going to the right, we're gonna double to the first linebacker on us or to the right of us, okay? Our backside, we lock unless we tag it. So we'll lock that tackle up on an end, we'll lock that guard up on a tackle, until we tag it, and then we talk about base blocks and double teams. Um, tight ends for us, they're always gonna be a part of the concept unless, unless we tag it. So if we tag, tag you, um, we can tag you and put you on a split zone look. Um, we can, we can tag, tag you with a lead look, so now you're gonna lead up for that backside linebacker that we're not blocking, okay? Um, there's a lot of different stuff we can do. If we put you on the backside, you become our adjuster. If you put, we put you on the back side, we'll just have you put up, go on the hip. You're going to scoop off that D lineman. Now we can call off our, line, our, uh, our lock and go full zone now. So biggest thing with us, we keep our steps very, very, uh oh, I'm going, there it is. We keep our steps very, very simple. You know, and last fall, I tried to give the guys different steps and their minds just went all over the place. So instead, everyone just is going to take a zone step. Now your zone step is going to base on what you're doing. Okay, so when we talk zone steps, it's a lateral and forward step taken on inside zone. It should set my nose up on the play side via the neck of the lineman of the man I'm supposed to block, whether that's a linebacker, a D lineman, whatever it is. We always talk about our second step is quicker than our first. We're trying to step on our toes again. Okay, so coaching cues off these steps. We'll drive out of our backside hip, force through the ground, step on my toes. The wider he is, and this goes back to your question, Coach, the wider he is, the more lateral my, my first step might have to be. I might have to open up now to get to that place I'd be the neck of that man. So here's how we'll drill it. We'll just put in simple, when we're introducing steps, just to force them to drive off that backside knee, drive out of that backside hip, we're just gonna put them on a knee. So they'll go ahead, they'll go on a knee. Right now we've got inside zone going to the left. So I should see this front side knee, or the knee that's up, that should be over my toes, so if you look from the ankle to the shin, it creates an acute angle, okay? So that's over my toes, and then we're just driving out. If I look at the kid in the purple sweatshirt, he does a pretty good job of it. The kid in the gray shirt isn't bad. I don't like how he hinges, he hinges. That just tells me your knee's not over your toes, it's behind there. So then we'll go, now we go right. One thing we say here, if I look at the kid in the purple sweatshirt, He's lateral and not vertical with it. So he's not playing on the other side of the line of scrimmage. 
Run game is about moving the ball forward, moving forward. We can't want to move the ball forward if we're not moving forward with it as well. So from there, dry blocks. So we'll consider a dry block anytime we're one-on-one -on -one with a D lineman. We have no help inside, okay? So we'll come up, attack both our tackles in an even front. Unless we tag the backside, we'll always be, be prescribed a dry block. So I have no help inside. So they're gonna, they're gonna zone step, keep their nose on their play side number. If he threatens me inside, which I can tell pre-snap, if he's a really heavy five, so his nose is on my cheek, okay? he really threatens me inside. So I can step with the wrong foot first now. So if I'm a right tackle, okay, he threatens me inside, I can step up field with my backside foot, take my zone step with the wrong foot now to force him outside. You know, the simplest thing for our kids that we taught them is if they're outside of you pre-snap, just keep them there. If they're, they're, Their leverage already beats you on this play. Keep them there, okay? If he's off my body, I can adjust from there. So if he's off my body, now I can open up. You know, we see teams a lot in our conference who like to play with wide five techniques. So we can wide that up, okay? And we talked about punch on the rise and accelerate on contact. So first thing we'll do, these are our dry progressions drill. I'm a big med ball guy instead of hand shields. One, hand shields are a huge pain in the butt to, te to teach the kids how to use. They go flying every way. And then two, med balls really teach, you guys, teach the kids how to play with a punch on the rise and play on the rise because now they're actually having to grab up and under the ball. Now, we only have four med balls in our program right now, so we kind of got to, with coaching, we kind of got to sit here, and the, me and the D-line coach got to, if you need the med balls here, we'll use the hand shield. So not all the film is with the med balls. But, uh, so we'll use them as much as we can. So we'll just break it down step by step. So this is our first step. If I watch 72 here, he's way too lateral. And I'll rewind this. He is way too lateral. He's way too lateral with that first step, okay? 55 here isn't as bad. Biggest thing with the steps is you have to set your, that first step should set my nose up on his play side number. Play side number, play side B of the neck. From there, we'll just drive it. Now, if you watch 72 here, he would lose this man inside if this was a live drill. He would lose this man inside because his first step is so wide. Okay, 55 does a little bit better job. He brings both of his hands together. I don't like how he's loading his hands up. That's not playing with clogged elbows but he's to his aiming point, his leg drive's not bad. Now, if we, we have issues with leg drive, we'll get up on the old school five-man sled and we'll just do the same thing. We'll just shade everyone to the right of the sled. Hey, it's inside zone going left, and we'll go from there. If we watch our center here, number 52, he's not playing with clogged elbows. He's loading up his punch, that's not clogged elbows. If I watch our right tackle, that's not advancing your stance. If I watch our left tackle, that's not bad, I just need to see him accelerate more off the ball. Then we can progress it even more. Now this is, we call our towel drill. This is more of a pre-practice drill with us. That's why you see the tight ends with us. Um, but we're just working our steps and aiming points off the towel. We'll usually pull this out a lot. And there, I turned off the annotations, but there's a line that I drew on number 70 right now because his first step is peer back. If your first step's peer back, you're gonna end up three yards in the backfield. So you can see that this next rep, I literally, just because we, we only have two boards, I'll just go and stand behind the kid and, hey, don't step on my foot. Just don't step on my foot. Now his first step is way too big here, but he's trying to take coaching. We're getting across the towel. If I look at 56, he's not keeping his hip square. 56 isn't keeping his hip square, so, we, tr so we're sh we struggle with that a little bit. Now combo blocks, double teams. All right, this is where we have to win, okay? Like I said, we don't have the biggest guys right now, um, so we, we try to utilize double teams as much as we can. You know, our lightest alignment right now weighs about 245. 245 plus if we had another kid that's 245 is still 500 pounds. I haven't seen very many 500 pound defensive tackles in my life. So we should be able to move him. We should be able to get him secured off. Okay, so we always talk about a postman and a drive man. The postman, you're the uncovered man of the combo. Okay, the drive man, you're the covered man. Okay, now when we talk, you have to win versus the down lineman. You know, one thing we talk about, our ultimate goal is to take him into the linebacker. Now, that usually doesn't work out that way, but that's our ultimate goal. We always talk about a man in transition stays in transition. So we'll see teams a lot, they'll line up in a two-eye or a two and slant to a three-post snap. 
that's fine. As they slant, we should, you'll see our gallop progressions. I should throw my shoulder into him and then keep it going. If he's in transition, if he wants to play in a three, let him play in a three. I can take him to the sideline now. Okay. One thing we always talk about, I block a gap with my eyes. I block a D lineman with my body. Okay, so I'll, I keep my eyes in my gap. If I'm a guard comboing with the center, you know, I can have spatial awareness and know that guy's a two eye and feel him with my backside hand and still play through strong, have my eyes in my B gap. Okay, we always talk about four eyes, two hands. Okay, if I'm the drive man, the covered man, my aiming point changes now, all right? I'm going to get my, no, my shoulder on the midline of the body. The postman, which you'll see in a minute, should be getting the shoulder on the midline of the body, and we're both peeking around the hip. Okay, so we've got four eyes on the down linebacker, two hands on. So, very first drill, these are our Crother and Chip drills. So, all this is, for the left side, all right, it's like we're going, indie, like we're going inside zone west, or east, or what we call west, that's our play direction. Um, left for us. All right, so now I'm comboing with the backside tackle. All right, if you're on the right side, it's like we're going east or right for us, okay? So we'll go up there. All we're simulating is we're uncovered, comboing with our backside teammate because our inside teammate's already comboing with somebody. Now, as we go, if I look at 68, his footwork's not correct here. He's stepping with the wrong foot. If I watch 55, this is better. He's taking the zone step with his correct foot. That second foot should be back through the crotch of, the, of that backside D lineman. So I'll step, put my eyes in my play side gap. One reason we do that, it combats movement. It combats movement. If we get those teams who like to line up in a three and slant the interior D line and shift the, and shift the front post, post snap, that's fine. I take that initial step. A man in transition stays in transition. He crosses my face. I see that flash of color. I can take him where he wants to go. Perfect. Oh, wow. Five minutes. So we can work from there. I'll kind of go fast here. The next thing we'll do is our gallop progressions. We didn't get to film this this summer, but now I'm covered. So this is our left tackle. Like he's working on inside zone going left or right. I'm sorry. He's still going to take on a half man. His elbows aren't clogged, but we're working up from there and I'll kind of go fast. The next drill we'll do is squeeze and drive. So now we've got the covered man. The uncovered man's going to set, already start fitted up and we're just squeezing it and driving it. Then we can go into pod work. So we'll have two, our two pods right now. We've got a left guard and a left tackle comboing with each other. All right, we'll have a down lineman and a linebacker. And they're just comboing back up. If I look at 56, he's not stepping back into the line, back into the man. Now we get hip to hip. But I'd like to see that second step be a lot quicker and step right through. I'm gonna try to get to some game film here. So how we block it up. So like I said, in an even front, the, play, the center will always combo with the play side guard up to the mic. We consider the mic the first linebacker inside, a play side for us. So we'll combo up to him. In this look, since we didn't tag it, we'll have one combo. So we'll just use those teaching progression techniques that we talked about and work up from there. Now we, sli now we slice it. So now we're running our insert zone and we slice it from there. We're full zone, the lock is off. So now the backside tackle and backside guard are comboing up to the in first inside backer on or play side. And here's just our lead zone. So we got some game film, run the ball west here. Now we pushed this pre-snap because 17 was walking up, that outside overhang was walking up, so we pushed it pre-snap. If I look at our center, now he's gotta go really quickly, but I'd like to see him if that linebacker was being patient, stay. Now one thing we talked about, I need more leg drive out of 55 right here. Same thing with 60. Now we've got, now we've got it against Lakeland. Here we call our slice tag. This is a pretty good combo by our center and right guard. Biggest thing here, I need to see 52 step back in and keep his base. Step back in and keep his base. And that's all the rest of these clips are us pushing. So I believe this is a good clip. So I, now we've got it right. So now since it's an odd front, the, set, the right, the play side guard will combo with the tackle. He'll check his B and work up. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. I'm sorry. So we work west. This is a much better job by our right guard and center getting hip to hip. Now we just need four eyes, two hands, and working up. Now we're going to the right. 
So the, the guard and center, I'm fine with the right guard throwing his hands to help the tackle here just because that guy was playing so tight. He snaps up. Now we could have hit this inside if we wanted to. The right tackle's got to be a little bit better. Then we just work off this. Our, our center's not playing with, mo with much leg drive. Does someone have a question? No, this isn't a replay, no. And then we work from there, but. Yeah, are there any questions? I know I just kind of had to go a little fast. Are there any questions on anything? No? All right, well, thank you guys.